Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Savvy Forensics. So this is the uh, four, eighth part of the identification of bodily fluids, which is blood. And in this video, we'll be talking about the immu double immunodiffusion assays. In the previous video, we have completed the immunochromatographic assays for the identification or the species identification of blood. So in this video, we'll be looking at the second technique which is the double immunodiffusion technique through which we can determine the species of the particular blood stain or any other biological fluid. Basically we are talking about blood here. So the first process is the ring assay while the second is the Osherloni assay. These both are very important and very useful techniques for the species identification of blood. Let's discuss it. So the first assay is the ring assay. What is ring assay? Let's discuss it. Ring assay can be performed in a test tube or a capillary tube. So we can use test tube or a capillary tube like this. So an antiserum is added, uh, which is a denser face is placed in a small tube. So you can see here that this antiserum is placed in the test tube in the lower portion. Why? Because it is a denser face. Now an antigen solution. So we have a sample that contains particular antigen suppose anti human uh, suppose human antigen so the solution is antigen solution is carefully layered on the top of an antibody so through it what happens is we don't have to mix don't let these two mixtures mix with each other they will do it by themselves if they are reacting so both the antigen and antibody they will diffuse toward each other like this and you can see a ring of precipitate in the positive reaction a ring of precipitate which is usually white in color can be seen or can be observed at an interface of the two solutions so you can see here that this is the interface and you can see for the positive reaction as a ring of precipitate is formed which is usually white in color this shows that the antigen is reacting to the antibody or vice versa because double immunodiffusion is occurring here and a negative reaction is indicated by a lack of precipitation. So there will be no precipitation in case of negative reaction. So this essay requires positive and negative controls along with the question samples. So I've taught about the concept of controls. I'm repeating it again that positive control is this sample which uh, contains the particular entity we are testing. And we know it that the particular biological fluid or the sample contains blood for example and negative control we know that that particular fluid which is blood is not present in this particular sample so this is positive and negative control let's move further and learn about the ring assay procedure in detail so firstly what we'll do is we'll extract the sample uh, in the laboratory we are getting sample we are receiving a sample from the personal that is usually collected from the crime scene so what we'll be doing firstly is we'll extract the portion of a stain usually extracted in the saline overnight at 4 degrees celsius this is the extraction procedure now we'll be including positive and negative control as i told you earlier now what what we'll be doing is loading of the antibody and sample spin the anti-human antibody in a microfuge and transfer the supernatant into test tubes or capillary tubes so this is a ring assay and uh, we learned earlier that it is usually carried out in the test tube or any other capillary tube so firstly we'll put the antibody in the tube so antibody will be present and we'll place the sample carefully over the top of the antiserum solution as it is the lighter phase now if the particular uh, sample contains antigen of blood or an human antigen so the we'll be getting a precipitate ring of precipitate at the junction so immunodiffusion reaction carry out the reaction at room temperature and in a positive reaction white precipitate between the two layers can be observed after several minutes this kind of precipitate is observed and this indicates that the sample is of human origin so we can confirm from here that the particular sample is of human and not any other animal origin and in case of negative a non-human origin sample will be getting no precipitate so this is a very simple procedure now the second procedure is the Osherloni double diffusion method. Let's learn it. It is very important. Usually this assay is only carried out in the laboratories. So the Osherloni assay is usually named after uh, the Swedish immunologist who discovered this procedure whose name was Orjan Osherloni. 
so this can be asked in your examination so you have to remember its name so this essay can be performed in agarose gel you have to make a medium for it so agarose gel uh, we are making a medium of agarose gel which is supported by glass slide or a polyester film we punch wells in that uh, gel and the antibodies loaded in the central well so in the um, just a second in the central well the you, usually the antibodies loaded while the question sample they are loaded in the circular fashion around the well or you can do vice versa you can load the sample in the middle let me make up so this is our gel you can either load the sample in the middle and other antibodies of the anti human or anti other uh, anti cow anti dog antibodies in the surrounding wells like this or vice versa you can load the uh, antibody in the central well and other samples in the surrounding wells as well this is your wish so the double diffusion of the antigen and the antibody from the well is allowed to occur during the incubation and we let it incubate after putting the samples as well as the antibodies so a single assay can compare more than one antigen so you can see here that you can compare more than one antigen in this single procedure so it, it is um, advantageous for the examiner you don't have to perform the other test in a tube different tubes you can perform a single in a single procedure you can test for different anti antigens and antibodies also you can determine whether the antigens in the question react in the same way or differently with the antibody so a positive result is noted when the precipitate lines for the positive controls and the samples fuse so no spur formation should be observed now let's see how we can cal analyze the results of this essay firstly let's discuss the procedure and afterwards we'll be looking at the how to analyze the result so firstly similar procedure as followed in the ring essay we'll prepare the sample extraction of the stain in 100 microliter of water for 30 minutes or we can directly place the stain in the well positive and negative controls are usually taken further how to prepare agarose gel for species identification you have to heat 4% agarose and cool at 55 degree celsius now what we have to do is pour into a piece of glass slide and left to solidify or you can pour it in a polyester support film or a petri dish and make a gel medium after solidification you have to make punch wells around it and the number depends on your sample so now you have to load the antibodies and the sample now apply anti human antibody in the central well we are taking particular case where we are applying the anti human antibody in the central well okay you don't have to get confused in it it i'm repeating it again and again that it all depends on your examination and your choice the apply the positive control to one of the surrounding wells the sample in question next to the control positive control so apply negative as well as substrate controls in the remaining wells this is one procedure now the immunodiffusion reaction what we have to do is we have to incubate the plate overnight in a moisture chamber at 37 degree celsius we have to leave it overnight and now so you can also stain the gel for viewing the results in a better way so there is additional procedure of staining where you have to soak the gel overnight in saline solution and then soak it in deionized water for 10 minutes you have to dry the gel and stain the gel with kumasi blue here you can interpret your results or view your results very clearly so the stained precipitate bands will appear blue which will give a direct indication that the particular stain is of human origin so this is the interpretation of results how you have to analyze the results of this test what we have to do is in an essay in which two antigens antigen 1 and antigen 2 are used adjacent wells and the antibodies loaded you can see here there is a this is a condition given here two antigens are taken and the antibody is placed in the central well so this is the antibody and these are the two antigens if the two antigens are identical the two lines will become fused so suppose these two antigens are identical so these two lines will fuse like this you can see this phenomena is called as identity here you can interpret that the particular both the antigens are identical similarly if the two antigens are totally unrelated so the lines will cross each other and they will not fuse so this is non identity so these two antigens are different you can you will get a cross here so this will interpret this will be interpreted that the two antigens are different and in the third case if the two antigens are related share a common epitope if both they are not identical but they are related 
the lines will merge with spur formation so you can see a spur formation here so through this you can interpret that these two antigens they are not identical but they are somewhat related with each other the spurs are continuations of line formed by the antigens due to its unique epitope both of them have an epitope which may be same so you are getting a spur formation and this phenomenon is termed as partial identity so we have discussed three cases of identity non identity as well as the partial identity i hope that it is clear to you all so this was all about this video i hope that you have all have understood the double immunodiffusion procedure for the identification of species these tests are very important for species identification and they are basically used in the forensic laboratories for determining the species of the particular sample if you have any kind of doubt you can ask in the comment section below you can connect with us through our facebook instagram as well as telegram channel for more knowledgeable content you can also visit our website www.saviforensic.com so we'll be meeting in the next video i hope that you all have liked this video you can also share it with your friends and subscribe to this channel for regular updates thank you very much for joining us stay tuned